can go barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, you know, Kyle, we 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 officially started the season. Uh, Ohio State won, uh, which means Kyle, it is time to celebrate. It is time to celebrate. Go ahead and go ahead and get that guy right next to your camera. All right. Whew. Poured that one strong. Oh, Ooh, Lord, help yeah. me. Oh, Lord, help me. Hopefully All I can right. get through this podcast. I poured that stronger than I thought. <laughs> All right. This is our Scarlet and Grade episode where we review and grade the Ohio State performance this past weekend in Notre Dame, Ohio State. It's lived up to the hype there, Jared. It was a yeah. It was a very entertaining game. It was a very defensive game. Yeah. And... I think you you said it best, Jared, and they may be maybe ahead of the um, the curve at least on the defensive end. Uh, you mentioned about Notre Dame, so a young team, up and coming team, and possibly in November come around and be one of the best teams and possibly have a shot at making it to the playoffs. And the performance that they had, even in a loss, it they didn't get blown out. It was an eleven point nope. loss for Notre Dame. Yeah, it's I was I was really impressed with Notre Dame's defense. Now I was more impressed with Ohio State's defense, though. Sure. <laughs> which which um is probably the big point I wanna we're gonna talk about in this episode here is the defense. Yeah. Ohio State's defense, Jared. Two hundred and fifty three yards total for the game, and only seventy two of that was in the second half. Only seventy two of that was in the second half. And hold on, I have this number here somewhere. Uh, 71 and 87. If someone wants to add that together for me real quick, I can't do that with a microphone in front of my face. That is 149. In the first quarter on two drives. Those are two separate drives in the first quarter. Um, the, the, the first, the very first play of the game, uh, play from scrimmage anyway. There was a missed tackle. Proctor apparently got benched for it. Uh, that was his only drive of the game. Um, I I don't necessarily know all the details there yet. All we know for sure is that he started the game. He missed that tackle, uh, and then he never got back in. Th- those are the facts on the table. Uh, we, we might figure out more details as time goes on, uh, but as of uh, Sunday night, those are the facts on the table. Um, yeah, uh, for, first and foremost, Kyle, uh, shout out to Marcus Freeman. Um, I did not expect this Notre Dame team to be this together. Especially, especially this quickly. Defense, especially on the defensive front. The defense, the defense, I'll, I'll, I'll give it. Um, the The offense is very young, replacing a lot of guys on the offensive side. Obviously, you know, they kept the offensive coordinator, um, but at the same time, you know, there were still some coaching changes on the offensive side. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, man, I, I'm just, I'm just really happy with what I saw um, with Ohio State here. Now, not as many points as what a lot of people were hoping it to be, hoping they would get close to 40 points like yeah. what we saw last year. But taking into consideration everything that you that happened in the game, the injuries, the, the out of sync with the offense, I thought they did pretty well for a – it's just funny listening to Ryan Day's press presser. He kept saying, he probably said that at least 10 times, the number five team in the country, the number yeah. five team in the country. He he really wanted to emphasize that saying that even though this is, hasn't been, wasn't Ohio State's best showing offensively, they played pretty well to scrap their way to a victory here. And scrap's an important word there because Ryan Day seemed – hell bound to win the game, you know, in a tough manner Mm -hmm. to prove something, to scrap it. 
to, you know, establish the running game. Because what you saw in this game that you don't necessarily always see from Ohio State was a running game that struggled early, but that they kept with. Yep. Because um, while Notre Dame has incredibly talented players, they don't have the depth that Ohio State has. Ohio State, you know, can run four, five, six defensive ends deep. Ohio State can run, you know, four to five defensive tackles deep. You know, they can run their linebackers, you know, four to six deep. And this is just not something Notre Dame is able to do and keep talent on the field at the same time. And Mm -hmm. what you saw was the Notre Dame defense get worn out. And by the way, one of the reasons why you see the Notre Dame defense get worn out, and which is one of the reasons why Ohio State wasn't able to run early but was able to run late, you know, the 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 guy eventually your legs give out. Mm-hmm. Well, like I, eventually you get tired, eventually your legs give out. And yeah, that, that, a, a that huge part of that has to do with not just the offense sticking with the run. A lot of that has to do with the defense putting the offense right back on the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the defense they, didn't have a whole lot of time to rest and recover. Yeah. That, it, and that really showcased in that second half. I mean, you go three and out in the first drive. You're like, Oh boy, did, did they actually make changes here? But the next four drives there, I mean, I would say three, cause the fourth one was just to run out the clock there. But I mean, yeah. it, it's an, it was an important drive though, but the final four drives were, 31 yards, 70, 95, and then wrapped it up with a with two first downs, getting 21 yards in that final final drive there. You you look at those, you look at the numbers there, and you said it best, Jared. They wore out Notre Dame in it, and it showcased in those last drives. Okay, Kyle. And, and, it, and it was at quick drives too. You look here, it's four and a half minutes, seven minutes, and then almost four minutes to wrap up the game there. There were there were long drives. Essentially what Notre Dame was trying to do to Ohio State was the possession, try to try to have as minimum possessions for Ohio State, which they only had, what was it, six, nine? They had, only had 11. Um, well, if you don't count the end of the first half and the end of the game, they only had nine true drives the entire game. Uh, Spikes, uh, I'm getting Kyle in the recording. Um, I, I think, I think Zach was talking to Kyle earlier, so I'm, I'm not sure what that could be, to be honest with you, but Kyle is showing up in my recording at the very least. Um, so I'm not sure what that is. Uh, let's see the, all right, Kyle, uh, we, we are supposed to be actually grading this team. So Let's take a step back. You know, we, we talked a little bit about the game. Uh, we're, we're obviously very happy about um, the way the defense played. Offense was um, suspect at times. But again, we have to realize, and Kyle and I were guilty, as guilty of this as anyone else. This is the number five team in the country. This is a team with a lot of defensive star power. Uh, a lot of defensive talent. Um, so... And by the way, another thing we saw, and maybe maybe we'll get in, we'll get into this. We're gonna we're gonna grade the quarterback. Uh, one of the things we saw that maybe had Stroud struggling a bit was some communication with some wide receivers. Uh, there were situations in which Stroud were was, I think, expecting a player to sit in a zone, but the player kept running as if it was a man coverage. You know, because if you don't know, especially like on a crossing pattern or something like that, a lot of times wide receivers are supposed to stop in between the zone. Um, but if they are running man, then they would just keep running to the sideline. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think there were some miscommunications with some of the younger players who weren't, um, you know, just like you go from Olave and Wilson and JSN, because let's not forget that Ohio State did not have JSN for the vast majority of this game. Yeah. Um, so you go, if you're CJ Stroud, you go from the best trio of wide receivers in the country last year 
And then you have essentially for the vast majority of the game, three new wide receivers to throw to. And by the way, let's make that four because Jeremy Ruckert also gone. And you have a new tight end in Cade Stover who got most of the snaps last night. Um, yep. so, 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 Green, so I'm just saying CJ Stroud was working at uh, a little bit of a disadvantage here. Uh, Kyle, I think, are you muted, Kyle, in the, in the discord call? I, let me reset Set myself. myself. Okay. Okay. Apologize. It was Apologize everyone. It was, that, it was Kyle's fault. Everyone. It was Kyle's yep. fault. Apologize for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so, so grading, grading the quarterback, CJ Stroud, 24 for 34. So that's. Uh, just under 71%, which, what was it? One of the over-unders that Austin had was, what was it? 72%, 73% for the year. So, yeah, I was about to say that was that was a year long. Um, mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm giving CJ Stroud a better grade than I think um, most people would give him or at least would have given him through the first half. Um, I think it's an A-plus performance. That's not to say, or yeah, let's just make it an A, a standard A maybe. Um, there were there were some mispasses. I think a lot of the things that look like mispasses were actually miscommunications with his younger receivers. He did start a little slow. I think he, what we saw from C.J. Stroud at points last year, was him being a little slow to start. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe needing to feel his way into the game, and I think we saw a little bit last night, a little bit with that. Uh, Saturday night with Notre Dame. Um, so for that reason, we're going to stick with an A instead of an A+. plus. But again, considering he had a lot of pass rush in his face, especially early in the game, um, again, some new interior offensive linemen playing, uh, th- four brand new, his four top receivers were gone for the vast majority of the game. Considering everything he was working against, I thought he had uh, a really good game. Yeah, I'll... I'll give him a kind of a little bit lower than what you said, Jared. I'd, I'd, I'd give him an A minus definitely room for growth. Yes. There was a lot of things that were going against him as Jared pointed out. I don't want to have to repeat what he said, but I, I think with all that, I think an A minus still, still room to grow, but really, really gutsy performance by him and a really tough defense he faced against. For sure. So running back, running back here, <laughs> It's funny uh, listening to or reading from the people in our Discord, which, by the way, if you haven't joined in our Discord, discord.thesloopcast.com. Come hang out with us during the game uh, or, heck, even before or after the game. A lot of fun, a lot of lot of great channels to partake in. And we, we, we had a lot of fun and a lot of communication going around in our Discord during the game here. But... Uh, a lot, of, a lot of discussion about Ohio State needing to run the ball more, run the ball more, which in the first half, you can make that case. But listening to Ryan Day afterwards about just Ohio State not being in the rhythm, which I watch, I watched quite a bit of uh, the game again uh, today on Sunday, Jared. And it's hard to run the ball when your offensive line is not consistent too, which I can understand right. why, why Ryan Day did not – commit into the running game early on. And once, once they uh, established a good rhythm going on that second half, you, you saw Henderson, you saw chop just plowing the way in the second half. So I, I, I give for the, for the time that the running backs had, I would, I would say like an A, A minus. I, I thought, I thought for what they were given, I, yeah, I think they did a really good job, though. They averaged what was it like six? I think it was, was it six, six per carry for. I think one of them had six. The other one had six point one, something like that. But essentially, six yards a carry for both of them. Yeah, um, e- exactly. Henderson, yes. fifteen carries, ninety-one yards. Uh, Williams, fourteen carries, eighty-four yards. Um, yeah, I think one of the, and one of the big things here is. And by the way, this is what we saw from the Notre Dame defense the entire game, except for one play, was them playing a soft shell the entire game. Um, 
Henderson's longest carry was 16. Mayan's longest carry was 15. Uh, we uh, longest reception was a Mecca Abuka uh, at 31 yards. You know what I mean? Like they were basically, and a lot of that Abuka catch was after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, so they were not allowing Ohio State to play deep. Yep, that yep. that was obviously they they were playing quarters and cover three. They were doing anything they could to force Ohio State to be patient. Yeah. So what would you rate the the running backs? I don't think I heard you. Uh, I think an A minus is sufficient. Um. I would okay. like even even with that defense, I feel like they have to break a long one in order to get an A or an A plus. Yeah. All right. Wide receivers is probably the hardest one for me here. Uh, so look, looking at the stats here, Ibuka had nine for ninety and a touchdown. Uh, Harrison Jr. five for fifty six. Uh, Xavier uh, two for two for thirty four. And a uh, touchdown. Ballard had two for fourteen there. So three we'll, for three, three for fourteen, and you also have to acknowledge that Xavier Johnson got a touchdown. Um, yes, both of the both of the touchdowns in this game for Ohio State. Um, excuse me, two of the three touchdowns in this game for Ohio State uh, came through the air. Mechabuka, Xavier Johnson, that one play I I had mentioned before. I don't know what the hell Notre Dame was thinking. Uh, a double safety blitz was not the right call against CJ Stroud. Don't like, I'm, I'm not trying to give other teams tips for the rest of the year. Lots of drops though, in their coming out party. Um, there, there were a couple drops for sure. Um, Marvin Harrison jr. Had a really, really tough catch that he almost converted on for a touchdown. Uh, just wasn't able to hold it through the ground. That was, mm -hmm. he's going to get that more often than he's not. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, but, uh, yeah. So don't, don't, don't double safety blitz CJ Stroud, a delay blitz against CJ Stroud is a very bad idea. Don't do that. Or, or maybe, or do do that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, or do do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, CJ Stroud was lucky. He normally completely fails on those. Um, yeah, no, but yeah, he, they, they sent a sub, a double safety blitz, which left Xavier Johnson, um, not like wide, wide open, uh, but he definitely beat his man one-on-one -on -one and took it for a touchdown. So I, I would give the receivers an A minus. I thought, I think there was a couple of drops there, but it's get, getting that, um, uh, early season jitters out of you. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Yeah, and just like not having JSN, um, considering that, yes. I thought that they recovered well. All right, tight end, Jared. Or or Stover. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, we, we saw a decent amount of Rossi in there as well. Um, mm -hmm. Love Johnson getting the touchdown, then in the next play, blowing up the guy on the kickoff return. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the reminder on that, Spikes. That's that's some former walk on energy right there. That is <laughs> getting that touchdown. Then, oh, oh by the way, get on the kickoff coverage, make the tackle. Um, place went nuts after that. Yeah, it not, came not through. Just the, not, not not just the crowd, but the bench. <laughs> the bench went nuts as well. Um, tight ends. Um, I thought so. Stover you know, made some important catches, nothing spectacular. Um, they went a little more too tight end when they were struggling to run. So they brought in the tight ends and started to, um, started to, uh, get some more push, started to get some more push when they brought in two tight ends, when they brought in Rossi. So obviously played an important role there. Um, but, uh, Ultimately, I I leave the game not thinking that much about the tight ends as a whole. I'd give them an A. They they did what they were told to do. Eh, I'll give them an A minus B plus. All right, all right. Offensive line, mm. mixed bag here. I thought the tackles played well. 
Um, I thought Donovan Jackson in his first start struggled, especially early in the game. Um, but you know, it's his first start. I'm not, you know, we're not, we're not pulling, we're not pulling a panic switch here. Um, and no, it's just, he struggled early in the game. He got better as the game went on. I'm not, uh, he was facing some really good defensive tackles, uh, for Notre Dame. Uh, yeah, Whipler played well. The, I thought the guards struggled at times. I mm, thought the uh, offensive tackles uh, played pretty well. Uh, they didn't play flawlessly by any means, but again, uh, Notre Dame's defensive line was absolutely the absolutely their strength. So, uh, but Dewan, but Dewan Jones, he had three, yeah, at least three uh, false starts there. I thought mm. it was two, but I'll I'll go with you on that. I think I'm pretty sure it's three. Uh, you, you, might you might be right. You might be right. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to go a straight B here, I think. Yeah, um, that's what I had to straight B. They, if, they, only if, up, what, they only load up one second. I think that was the first drive. They only load up one second. That was it. Uh, yeah. I mean, so that's obviously, you know, good um <laughs> uh, but really good but cj stroud did have to run out of the pocket a lot so i think cj stroud probably gets some points for that um so yeah it's it's we're we're we are grading a bit on a curve here too because once again the notre dame defensive line has some very talented players on it yes all right let's let's swap sides of the ball here we're splitting up the defensive line so defensive ends Defensive ends, I, I'd give an A. They they uh, did absolutely. They did extremely well, and you saw it right out right at the, uh, the first uh, series there, really got after them. And watching a few of these plays, um, rewatching them, a lot of stunts, a lot of um, a lot of mix mix plays that Coach Knowles put in here. Man, this is this is gonna be fun fun defensive line to watch and they, they played really really well it didn't really show up too much in the stats but they were so disruptive so disruptive yeah uh jtt had a pretty tic tac roughing the passer call called on him that that made that first big catch all that much worse which essentially led to the field goal i i thought it was i thought but, it was a bad call but they only let up three points though because yeah from that yeah, uh, I thought that was a huge statement uh, from the uh, from the defense to you know give up a huge play. They tack fifteen yards on top of that, and then to still hold it to a field goal, I thought was again uh, excellent. Uh, yeah, last year that would have been a touchdown, one hundred percent. Harrison played extremely well. JTT was bossed, uh, was boss, and Jack was a beast. How are you gonna? Oh, because we're yeah, we're still just talking about the defensive ends. Never mind. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought that they all played well. As Kyle said, a, a lot of that doesn't show in the stats, but um, we we did see a lot of Sawyer playing that um, Leo position. So I and I, that was fun because he was sort of up and playing a sort of linebacker ish position at times. Uh, we saw him drop into some coverage. We saw him do some really good things. It- and that um, was one thing I really looked at on the defensive side, just how much movement was going around pre-snap. Mm-hmm. Really confusing the offense, really confusing the really the offensive coordinator <laughs> of knowing what to do here. You saw, you saw Jared as Jared said, Sawyer moving up to play kind of that Leo position, and then all of a sudden they go into a three safety where where it looks like they're playing three deep and then all of a sudden only only one safety is back and they're they're pressing up. It was it was a lot of fun rewatching that game. Well, so. they also had like a lot of movement along the defensive line, which is something we had not seen in the past two years. Um, a, 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 a play in particular pops in the mind. It was a Notre Dame had a third and long and the the defensive ends both got on to one side of the center or excuse me, the defensive tackles both got on one side of the center. And it's like, they were almost just goading him into scrambling. 
And then they just stunted immediately back into that gap they left. And whether that was a designed quarterback run or not, I don't know. Um, it it does at least look like they dared him to run where there was a hole in the defense, and then they just immediately filled the hole in the defense from the yeah. beginning. It looked like they goaded him into it. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't. I don't. Again, maybe it was the call. Maybe it wasn't. Um, defensive tackles, Jared. Did we the, the defensive ends? Uh, by the way, a, a lot, I, I lots of hits. A. Yeah, uh, an A for sure. Lots of hits on the quarterback. Um, a lot of forced. Uh, balls. Uh, Ohio State had a really good defensive three point percentage in three point. I said three point third down percentage in this game, um, and a lot of that has to do with the quarterback not being comfortable in the pocket. And also because of that too, due to that is that defensive tackle, Jared. The defensive yep. tackle here. Um, where 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 is it? I was trying to find the. Uh, Christmas story gift, but I'll, I'll go with this one here. <laughs> I give them an A plus, 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 plus. Defensive yeah. tackle played extremely well, mainly, um, mainly, um, mainly Mike. Mike, Mike Hall. So, so well. Yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, Mike Hall is like a third string defensive tackle. And I'm just sitting there again. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Uh, then he started the game. He took over the game. Uh, and defensive he didn't know tackle he was starting until a couple of days before, too. <laughs> yeah, it was it was absolutely a tremendous day for Mike Hall, um, and the defensive tackles as a whole. Not just Mike Hall Jr. by any means, but absolutely tremendous day for him uh, and the defensive line as a whole. I mean, you you held Notre Dame to. 76 rushing yards for the game. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, the offensive line of Notre Dame was absolutely a strength. It was absolutely a strength. Make no question. Like they're, they're missing probably their, one of their best guys uh, that, you know, uh, they're, I believe he played either center or guard, um, but he's, you know, fifth year senior. Yeah. Guard. Uh, fifth year senior, um, all American, uh, tremendous, tremendous player didn't play. Uh, so, but outside of that, you had, you know, four returning starters, all of whom are, you know, going to get it. All of whom are going to get a shot in the NFL, uh, an excellent offensive line, but you wouldn't have guessed that by watching last night, the defensive line, just eight from top to bottom. They did. Linebackers, Jared. Man, we saw some aggressive play from the linebackers. And Austin, go ahead and just do earmuffs if you need to do this. <laughs> Steele played really well. He did. He did. He but did. So, but so did Eichenberg. Sorry. Eichenberg <laughs> was tremendous last night. Steel Chambers was tremendous last night. Um, I, I didn't see much in the way from the backups. I think we, there's a, a, a Cody Simon missed tackle. Um, Jared, you could have played well in that scheme. Yes, he did have two. Sets. No, I couldn't. Yes. Have you seen, I, I, I am slow as shit. Maybe I can, Jared. No, <laughs> you're too small. You're too small. Yeah, I know. Hicks no, greater I, than Borland, uh, maybe eventually, but not not right now. Yeah, no, I linebackers a they did a fantastic job plugging in the holes, um, making making good making good tackles. That was one issue we had last year, which is missed tackles, and rarely saw that in this game. Rarely. So yeah, I give the linebackers an A. Just tremendous, tremendous effort in this game. You don't know uh, where I live, Austin. How could you have doxed me? All right. Corner, Jared. The cornerbacks. All right. Uh, corners, I, again, thought played well outside of, like, two big passes. And one of those was against the safety, technically. Um, 
outside of two big passes, the wide receivers uh, did not do much in this game. Um, Which you know, is a good thing. You can't you can't hold you can't hold. Uh, uh, for, first off, Mayer is a potential. Um, you know, first half of the first round draft pick in the NFL. Um, he had five catches for 32 yards. That's tremendous. And that's not on the corners. Um, that's not on the corners per se. So, but again, the wide receivers, uh, 54 yards, 32 yards, 31 yards. Um, only, only Lindsay had more than a couple catches. Um, and, and I thought even the deep ball that, um, that, that we saw, um, Burke give up Burke was right there. You know what I mean? Like Burke was right there. So, um, it's not even like it was a blown or bad coverage or anything like that. Yep. Yep. So I think, I think overall I'd give, I would give the corners an A. Yeah, I'll just round up. I'll say an A. I, they did a great job, and you held. Oh, where, where's where's my number at, Jared? By they the way, held, uh, Spikes gives uh, Spikes brings up a really good point. Was happy to see that offensive PI call with uh, it was Cam Brown, by the way, turning his head. Yeah, that that's a huge play that killed that drive. Cam Brown turning his head, locating that ball, and forcing the Notre Dame player to interfere him killed that drive, and that drive had some momentum. So, absolutely, yeah. Cam Brown deserves a huge amount of credit for that. Yep. Uh, let me find let me find this stat real quick here, Jared. Uh, yeah, first half. First half, um, uh, Tyler went 8 for 10 for 128 yards. By the way, I said Lindsay had more than a couple catches. No, he didn't. I'm sorry. I was reading the targets on that. Mm-hmm. He seriously had one catch. Styles had one catch. No one, none of the what? No, no one except for Mayer had more than one catch. Stop, stop, and think about that. Only yeah. Mayer, who again is going to be a stud in the NFL. Only Mayer had more than one catch for Notre Dame last night. So in the fir- in the first half, uh, Tyler went eight for ten for 128 yards. Second half, he went two for eight for only 49 passing yards. Zero zero in the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, the, uh, the, I don't know how many times I can just say that the defense played lights out. So the well, corners again, no wide receiver had more than one catch. I think that's an A plus performance by the corners. And you hold the wide receiver to, or excuse me, the quarterback to under 200 yards. None of the wide receivers had more than one catch. That's an A plus performance by the corners. Yep. And then the safeties last position here. Safeties. Uh, I think it's, I think it should be said that I think the safeties played excellently as well. Um, we, again, we saw, we did see Proctor give up that big play on the first play. Um, didn't come back in after that. Not 100% sure what the story is there at this time. But Ransom led the team in tackles. Um, Hickman isn't going to be getting as many tackles this year as he got last year because he's playing that deep safety role. But outside, again, outside of that one play, you know, they didn't give up a ton of big yardage plays. So the cap was kept on Notre Dame. There weren't a lot of big plays. So if he was doing his job as the deep corner, the no big plays happened outside of the one. Yep. Story so I, was I, I, that I'd give them an A. Uh, Proctor played five snaps, all of which were on the first drive. The first drive was five plays. Um, story is that he wasn't the hot hand via Knowles. Okay. He wasn't the hot hand might be the nice way of saying I benched him because he missed a tackle. I put Ransom in and Ransom was playing well. Oh, I know you know that, Jerk. Uh, Austin, I don't know if you realize this, but I'm recording a podcast. Um, <laughs> Like, I have to say these things out loud. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Um, quickly here. So special teams outside outside of the missed field goal, which was a real surprise, real surprise to see Noah miss that field goal there. Uh, special teams, excellent, excellent. Both both on the punting and kickoff returns, stellar. Or not kickoff, um, kick kickoff coverage. Excuse me, kickoff coverage. Yeah, stellar. Stellar, stellar. I, I don't know why Notre Dame was trying to return. It wasn't going well for them. I don't know why they were trying. They were giving yeah. up five, ten yards by trying to return those. Yep. Yeah, Xavier was killing that. Yeah. And then, so special teams, I guess, in A minus, just that missed field goal. We'll, we'll, we'll set it at that. And, and the coaching. But by coaching... the way, we do have to acknowledge, uh, again, if we're talking about how well the defense played. I think we also need to talk about how good the okay. punting was and pinning the punting. I, I want to bump that up to a solid A if we okay. take into consideration the punting. Yeah. Murko yeah, had Mur- an A plus Murko had an A plus 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 yeah, if, across. <laughs> I, unfortunate unfortunately he got drugged down by a missed field goal that wasn't his fault. Mm-hmm. All right, and then the coaching staff, I give an A. They they made solid halftime adjustments. And came back to to win that that damn football game. Uh, it's an A plus for me. To see what Knowles has done in a single off season to this defense, it's an A plus for me. It's a, it's it's absolutely an A plus for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I can't I can't have it be anything other than that. I just just off of Knowles alone. Simply because JSN was out, the offense sputtered. Also because you were playing a really, really good defense. Like you, you, we have to acknowledge that Notre Dame has a really good defense. Uh, that that has to be said. Like there was another team on the field last night, and yep. All right, and the came out. Just saw this right before we hit. Record Absolutely, here. Austin. It's a Sunday defense. Absolutely. Ohio, Ohio State named their players of the game. So offensively, they named Mayan Williams. Defensively, Mike Hall. Special teams, Xavier Johnson. And their um, scouting team, um, Pallier Neoteote. Nailed that pronunciation, Kyle. <clears throat> Getting better. <laughs> All right, let's 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 get to some questions here, Jared, and we will we'll call it an episode. All right. Uh, Nomad, Nomad with some facts. After starting his career 0 and 2, <laughs> is Freeman the worst head coach ever? No. No. <laughs> who who who'd they play last year? I forget. And remember who did Notre Dame play in the bowl last year? Oh, it was yeah, Oklahoma, was Oklahoma State. State. That's right. Yeah, he played he played Knowles back to back. That's right. Yeah. That's that that's a that's tough. I, I how did how did we not know that? We we really should have been hyping that up I just, as a thing. I just forgot for about five seconds. I, I remember that. I know, right, Austin? <laughs> All right. Uh Buckeye Esquire asks Tom and Tony, which by the way, love them to death, uh, mentioned that they changed the third down music from Hell's Bells to Kickstart My Heart. Is this the linchpin to the improved third down defense? I, I I pride myself as a person who uh like knows music. What is Kickstart My Heart? What should I know this song? Is is this a song I should know? I um, think so. It's a it's it's a it's a late eighties song. Uh, no, I, I bring back hell's bells. I'll, I'll say it. Bring back hell's bells. Um, that being said, I have no idea what this other song is. All right. Uh, Nomad asks if you were a real life gamble, which we don't, uh, is 58 and a half too much for Arkansas state game. I see. Is it, is it that much now? I thought it's it's at 44 points, I thought. I thought I it's 44. I don't know. Um, what? Let me see. 
Um, it is going to be on the Big Ten Network. Uh, it is 44 right now. 44. So whatever whatever 58 and a half was at the start. Was it? Yeah. Or is that just Nomad making shit up? Even 44 seems like a lot. It has to be, though. It has to be, but... Like, it has to be know. a number but, that Ohio but, State can hit if they well, want to hit, but doesn't mean they will hit it. Well, find out our answer on Thursday's episode. There you go. 58, right, um, I wouldn't, though. I, 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 would never, I would never on 58. All right, and then the last couple questions from Buckeye Zach here. The defense did what they needed to, holding Notre Dame to 76 on the ground, 250 total yards. Does this reflect how crucially needed Knowles was, or was Notre Dame just that pedestrian? We we really don't know about Notre Dame's offense yet, but still, if you couldn't see the if you could not see the difference in that defense, even if they were playing against air. If you couldn't see the difference in their movement, the difference in their scheme, the difference in how they were reacting and flying how to the ball, they, yep. I don't care who they were playing against. It's not relevant. Yes. It, you absolutely saw the difference in that team. They could All have right, been playing uh, against the scout team. I, I don't yeah. care. Right, um, another question. Teton demonstrated they can handle Colorado State. <laughs> Does this mean Jimmy Harbs knows hot dogs and milk better than anybody on this planet? I'm not sure how one flew into two. Um, but, I mean, uh, did he need... <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I don't feel like that needed to be proved. I think we knew that already. All right, um... Uh, Rank the slobs last night on one to ten. Where would they land? I uh, I I think, know, we, I think, we a B. We gave him a B. Yeah, we gave him a B. So that would be eight out of ten. It depends upon if you're using an incremental scale or an academic scale. Yeah, that's true. So seven or eight out of ten. All right, uh, Buckeye Zach. Also, one more question: Does Jim Knowles just is your favorite type of question, Jared. Does Jim Knowles just push Dave further out of his nope. lead? Moving off on, on, not third? answering this question. <laughs> Don't make me go on that rant again. Or maybe that's what you want, but we're moving forward. Yes. That, was that, that was, the last that, question? That was the last question, Jared. <laughs> okay. All right, Kyle. Um, who's your player of the game? I'd say Mike Hall. I'd say Mike Hall. I I think so. Yes. Murko Austin says it? Murko, and I and I don't I don't dislike that answer, if, especially if Jim, especially on an Jim evening Trussell in which you show if we had Jim Trussell on this show, he would have said Murko without any hesitation. <laughs> yeah, and I mean they were honoring the 2002 team last night, so it only made sense. It was. What about you, Jared? Uh, no, you're right. It's my call. All right. All right, that's it, Jared. That is all we have in our notes for for our week one of Scarlet and Grade. Uh, Austin says Emeka wouldn't be a terrible answer either for what it's worth. 100%. Oh, absolutely, Austin, 100%. Um, yep. I think Mayan Williams would also be a good answer. Uh, CJ Stroud would be a good answer, but that it always feels a little too easy to give it to CJ Stroud. All right. Uh, that's it, Kyle. I um, want to encourage everyone to uh, visit all of our uh, visit all of our stuff that you can find at the Uh We post highlights. If you want a short version, just like a little highlight snippet of of a uh, of what we do here, you can find that on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter, on uh, our YouTube Shorts playlist, which you can uh, find at Shorts the U- uh, shorts dot the um, We have t-shirt stores. Uh, we specifically have a t-shirt store that is Sloopcast uh, stuff. And then one that's just sort of like Ohio stuff. Um, and you can find both of those links. Uh, the 7071 store is the Ohio is just like the general Ohio stuff. 
you can find the link to that on the uh, as well as our Patreon, our Discord, our pages on Apple Music and Spotify and other places. Um, yeah, that, that's all the plugging I feel like doing, Kyle. Um, I feel like I'm missing a crucial one. Uh, YouTube.thesloopcast.com, Twitter. I, I feel like I'm forgetting something, uh, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> Jesus, LSU is terrible. Yeah, we almost changed the schedule of this recording because we're recording opposite Louisiana State and Florida State, but they both suck, so who cares? Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, Probably some big news related to basketball. Uh, Seth Towns stepping away from playing basketball uh, for medical and other other issues going on. So wish him the best in his next chapter of his life here, but no Seth Towns for the Buckeyes this year. So that means Ohio State does have an open scholarship for this upcoming season. So I'd be interested to see what who they could bring in from the transfer portal. Right. Um that would be it. That is the end of today's show. Um, I don't know who I'm playing. I forgot to line up a band because I'm bad at my job. Uh, we'll do settle your scores. That sounds fun. Um, all right. Tonight's ending music will be a pop punk band out of the Cincinnati area called settle your scores. Um, I was about to do it, but they're a pop punk band from, a pop punk band from Cincinnati. You don't need more of an intro than that. They're fun. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Settle Your Scores. Mm-hmm.